Pierce and George have this conversation about Russia, and George just proceeds to to educate him. To just because you know Pierce tries to cut him off, he does everything he does, but you can't cut off. Can't cut off gorgeous George. Can't cut that man off. You gonna have to let that man cook. So we gonna check it out. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but with the Ukraine war, you feel that this was a not necessarily a justified, but an inevitable response. Provoked. I, I'll go with which is what Farage's which is what Farage said. Yeah, and not just Farage, but Macron today, uh, who said he's going to continue his dialogue uh, with Putin. Uh, well, you have to try. You have to try and. Yeah, well, forge that's, peace. in a way, that's all that for In terms of his provocation, saying, I'm very curious about yeah, this. Because I, here's my thing about the provocation. Ukraine voted by a massive majority, 90-something percent of the people in the 90s, to become an independent, democratic, sovereign country mm. in Europe. Mm. And they were then persuaded by the international community to give up their nuclear deterrent Defense. Well, it wasn't theirs. It was the Soviet. Okay, but they were they were persuaded to give up their weapons. Yeah, but it wasn't and, theirs. And part of. Okay, so really quick, uh, I just want everybody to remember this conversation about Ukraine holding a vote to become an independent nation, right? Because at one point, a conversation about or an argument about Crimea is going to come up, and I just want y'all to remember how passionate Piers was about this point about Ukraine voting to be an independent nation. But Russia the, was the inheritor okay, state. But, but the deal, the deal was that if they did that, mm. then they would be guaranteed their independence. Mm. What could be more independent than, in Ukraine's case, for example, wanting to be, of their own volition, a member of NATO? But we had a government. a defensive alignment. In 2014, there was a government that did not want to do those things, mm. and it was overthrown in a coup d'etat. The mm. parliament on fire, the president fleeing for his life, and the first act, of the terrorized deputies, literally with a gun at their head, was to outlaw the Russian language. Now, one third that is, of bro, the that, Ukraine. that is literally insane, bro. I like know I work with people who are from Ukraine, right? Like they they grew up in Ukraine, and some of them grew up in Ukraine during the Soviet era. Era, and they speak both languages, and it's just like wild to think. Like, I mean, they're my age, bro. Like these are dude, my age. Like the language that they grew up speaking and they still speak primarily is outlawed in the country that they were born in. Is that, bro, what? When, when that's how the conversation starts out, I don't understand how you got the audacity to even think like, man, I'm definitely on the right side of this argument. If that's how your conversation starts out with the country that outlaws a language where a third of the people speak it, All right, good luck, Pierce. Many people are Russian-speaking people, including Zelensky, uh, the greatest showman on earth. Mm. Uh, I could call him something else, but let's... Well, what else would you call him? Uh, I'd call him a thief. I'd call him a fraud. I'd say that he fooled the Ukrainian people, that he was going to make peace uh, See, with the Russian... I'd call him an absolute Russian... hero. And I would say back at you, George, that for such a smart guy, and you are a smart guy, I've met a lot of politicians... You're right up there in terms of your intellect. It seems to me that you're more comfortable just going along with the Putin worldview mm. than you are going along with the view of someone that Putin has barbarically, illegally invaded. I mean, you and I agreed about the illegal invasion of a... Hold on, what? Hold on, hold on, really quick. <laughs> hold on. I think that we need to... I think that peers... <clears throat> was born, what, maybe at 1158, maybe 1159 p.m. yesterday. D does he know that the world view of Putin until a couple of years ago was horrible, and that was specifically because of the propaganda push by the empire? So for him to be like, it's, it's, it's funny that you're more comfortable going with the world view of da-da-da. Bro, hold up, Piers. Bro, you are the king of being comfortable with going with the world view of whoever. When you perceive that the world view of Israel's response to Hamas and, and Palestine and Gaza 
was proportionate and justified. You, you thought that was the worldview. And I know he presents all these reasons as why he changed his mind, but let's be honest. Pierce changed his mind because he realized really quickly <laughs> the worldview is changing and I have a show I have to keep up with. And, I, and, and, and people only watch whenever people come on my show and hand me my ass on this issue of Palestine. Because they don't want to hear my analysis about it because it sucks. Pierce always goes with the worldview. But the truth is, the worldview of Putin for a very long time was negative. That is part of the reason why, for example, the ruble has never been valued at the, to the degree that it should be valued despite being backed by gold, despite it not being fictitious money like the United States, like USD. Right. Despite them having oil and natural gas and, and those type of resources. Physical, tangible resources, despite actually having a balanced budget. It's because of the world view of Russia that was pushed because of people like Pierce. People only began to change their view of Putin because y'all dumbasses decided we're going to give people the opportunity to decide. You're going to stand with Putin or you're going to stand with the Nazis? Uh, well, I guess I must stand with Putin. Hey, what? Th those are my options. There's Putin and Nazis. I think I'm gonna go with the with the with the guy who's again who who wants to denazify. I think I think I'm gonna go with the guy who's not a Nazi from the country known for fighting against Nazis. And then people started doing their own research, and then it, that interview probably with Tucker Carlson helped a little bit. Uh, y'all caused people to do their own research on Putin, and that changed the worldview. But uh, uh, George's view on Putin hasn't been altered. It, has, it hasn't changed. He's always relied on the facts. He's always been aware of U.S. imperialism and U.S. propaganda that's been pushed to sway the view, corrupt the view of Putin as a world leader. Right? He's always been con consciously cognizant of that. But to say that he's going along with the world view, no. This is the same stance that George has had. George has been talking about the coup. In Ukraine, this is I've been on his show several times. OK, I know <laughs> I've been on his show several times. We've dis we've discussed it. So I know he's been discussing it. That is it's just di the way Piers more. I hate the, his interviewing style because there are people I disagree with. Like, I'd rather just like, like I say, I'd rather listen to an interview with Candace. Uh, interviewing someone on the left while she clearly uh, pre presents herself as a conservative. Because at least I know that your disagreements are genuine. Right? At least I know. But when you pretend to be an ally in ways that Piers Morgan tries to pretend to be an ally for the, for the you know, he, try, he pretends he fights for the average, for the, for the working man, for the average people, for the people who don't have a voice. He pretends to be an ally. Then you get this shit. You get disingenuous disagreements. And you get Piers Framing things in a way that doesn't, that isn't, that isn't true, and also he knows isn't true. And he just keeps cutting people off until, you know, there, there's no time left. That's kind of what he does. So, uh, thank you very much for the super chat. Eric, Piers Morgan needs to get embarrassed once in a while on his show so he can come in. Bro, you know what's funny, Eric? I literally said that. I like y'all think Piers Morgan likes it. I feel like he's a masochist. I feel like he just he gets excited at the idea of getting in, thoroughly embarrassed. Because there are some people he invites on to embarrass him more than once. <laughs> After he gets owned by somebody, he's like, hey man, so you got any plans on Friday around six p.m. or seven p.m. London time? Because I'm free if you are, so we can maybe go for round two. Like, that's how I feel. <laughs> Spark A, everything negative you've heard about Putin in the last 25 years, including poisoning hoaxers. Oh, oppose, uh, wow, excuse me, guys. Poisoning hoaxes is a product of Western propaganda and the five eyes. The five eyes referring to the intelligence communities, people. Uh, Putin is actually a reasonable and righteous man. Hell yeah, he's reasonable because he could have just... I don't know why people are under this impression that he couldn't just wipe Ukraine off the face of the fucking planet. 
Russia's army is like that. Like, they are like that. And people are, like, y'all do know like the Spetsnaz, the special forces of Russia, of Russia are considered the most elite fighting force in the world. In the world. Because whatever you think about the Navy SEALs, they not doing that shit in negative 30. <laughs> that I can guarantee you. <laughs> All right. He has been as reserved and as measured and as judicious as he could possibly be, given that the not, not just the United States, but all of NATO and the West have just been pushing him and pushing him and pushing him. You, I, I, he better than me. You don't get to push me that many times. But he understands that there, he doesn't view lies laws as a data set. He doesn't view lies laws as a number. He actually values life which is why he does everything in his power to prevent escalation. But at a certain point, he, he, he got to defend his people because it's his people that were being bombed through the violation of the Minsk Agreement. He got to defend them at some point. Or else Russians that have all this confidence in him are going to view him as being weak. And also it's just a moral obligation. And it's a patriotic obligation for his country. But you are correct. Appreciate the super chat. Let's go back. Let's get back to it. Iraq. Mm -hmm. We thought it was completely wrong, mm -hmm. right, that America and the UK and the other allied forces invaded Iraq as retribution for something they had nothing to do with. Um, and it turned out to be a total disaster that spawned. And we both got they, sacked. And we both got sacked, right? And we agreed about that, which is why <laughs> I'm really struck by the fact that we agree, we disagree so vehemently mm. about what seems to me a very similar situation. No, because you've got to know the history. Why you do should know it. I do know the history. Uh, they, Not close. Russia has been invaded. Hold up. Twice. Did you just compare Iraq to Ukraine? He, like, it's like, we're both pissed about the fact that Iraq got invaded for something that had nothing to do with. Ukra Ukraine violated the Minsk Agreement that they made with Russia that, I mean, one, it was, hey, don't kill Russians. So, like, you would figure that would be easy to, to, to respect. But, hey... When your country's ran by neo Nazis, is what it is, right? I guess it's a little bit more difficult than they thought. But two, don't try and join NATO because you're not about to put my adversary's weapons near my border because they already got the D. People don't realize the DMZ is right there. The, the DMZ is the demilitarized zone between that, which is at the border that separates North and South Korea. North Korea doesn't border Russia, but the only thing between North Korea and Russia is water. In other words, the demilitarized zone effectively borders Russia. Then you put all these uh, these military bases and operations in the Middle East, and people, a lot of the times, unless you look at a map lately, don't realize how close the majority of those countries in the Middle East are to Russia. They're launching points. And then to top it all off, you know this, as Zelensky, the president, you know how... You know how serious I'm about this shit, which is why we did the Mints Agreement. And yet you come out anyway and are like, yeah, we're going to join NATO. That's our goal. And kill Russians on top of all that. Bombing the Donbass region. Bombing eastern Ukraine. What do you mean? How, how is that close to being similar to Iraq? It has everything to do with each other. <laughs> by Napoleon and then by Hitler using the runway of Ukraine. Mm. The idea that Russia is going to allow uh, American missiles masquerading as NATO missiles on the soil of the place where Russia was twice invaded uh, in the last couple of years. Do you know how much of years. Russia... Russia is one of the, is the biggest... It is the biggest country, country in the world, right? Do you know how much of it percentage-wise is bordered by NATO countries, including Finland, who's just come into it. Yeah, if you put a nuclear... Do you know how many? Uh, yeah, uh, if you put a nuclear... Hang on, hang on. Well, if, that's a different I'm, question. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, that's a different question. I'm, 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 I'm what percentage is, is actually yeah. bordered by NATO countries? See, that's what I'm talking about, bro. Why, let not finish the damn point. Why don't... He's trying to make a very serious point and a very relevant point, and you're like, how many countries are... Doesn't matter, first of all, because you, you violated your treaty. So, fuck arounds and finds out. That's what happened. <laughs> Doesn't even let him finish talking, bro. Countries. Well, you've got the Including Baltic Finland. states, and if you had had on, what, Ukraine... Do you know the answer? No. Right, have a guess. 10, 15? 10%. Yeah. 
10 percent a yeah. tiny percentage what, what of russia's mean? border but what, what does it that means mean? is i'm not what does that have to do with i'm confused what does that have to do with Zelensky and ukraine violating the Minsk agreement he like how many you know how many countries right no 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 yeah first of all there 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 are countries that also recently joined but uh, you know the reality is those countries uh, don't have necessarily an antagonistic or ad adversarial relationship with Russia. A lot of them don't, right? They might not be best of friends, but they don't, they, you know, they don't have a history of beef with each other. Uh, also, those countries, like Finland isn't bombing Russians because that's what was happening in Ukraine. But two, they didn't have an agreement explicitly saying you motherfuckers specifically can't join NATO. Especially after the United States, which is effectively, you know, NATO, that is NATO. I mean, we're being honest, everybody was just kind of like on the train. The United States overthrew your government to put somebody in power that would want to join NATO so that they can conduct military operations there and have another launching point in case they have to go to war with Russia. Like, Ukraine is not Finland. And also, Ukraine's treaty with Russia has zero to do with Finland joining NATO. But I will say, NATO is stupid. If you were really trying to protect Ukraine, don't piss them, don't piss off Russia by granting accession to other countries that are bordering or nearly bordering Russia. Because we all remember what is the point of Russia, or NATO, excuse me. The reason NATO was created was to destroy Russia. That is its only goal. It is a reason for its existence. And the one thing I asked of you was don't bomb Russians, don't, don't violate the treaty. And you did both. So I don't know why he asked that question. A NATO, missile takes two... NATO is not... A, a missile takes less than two NATO minutes. NATO is a defensive organization it tell that to the birds well, tell that to the people of libya why tell do you that think why do you think so many Yugoslavia. why do you think so many of the former countries in the soviet union are racing to want to be part of it because they are fearful not of nato attacking them uh -huh. but of russia attacking no, them no the nato is a defensive country y'all ladies, ladies and gentlemen i don't know if y'all know this but like I said, data was created to destroy the Soviet Union. We all know that. World War, after World War II, did, did Russia invade Vietnam? I don't think so. Okay. Did, did Russia invade Korea? Because y'all remember, Soviet Union was right there. Russia, Soviet Union didn't invade Korea. Did Soviet Union help... <laughs> help participate fund fund and militarize the apartheid in south africa no nope, that was that was the united states nato country hell did they conduct duck multiple operations in the caribbean to overthrow multiple governments did the soviet Union? i don't think so didn't happen there is literally no example in the history of history of of, po of Stalin and post-Stalin Soviet Union attempting to colonize a country in the global south. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that? Not a single example in history. So how the hell is Piers Morgan going to sit here and lie to my damn face and lie to, 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 to Gorgeous George over here and lie to his audience and be like, it, it, they don't defensive. They're, they're, they're defensive because we know that organizations created by the United States are always defensive countries. What do you mean? Defensive def against who? The Soviet Union was the only superpower that didn't try to expand after World War II. They wanted their countries back, which is like, that's their, you know, they, I mean, hell, they lost the most trying to beat the Nazis that the United States helped to create. So I think that honoring the Yalta agreement was the least you could do, right? But y'all, the United States refused to honor the Yalta agreement, then started NATO. So like you refused to honor the agreement with a country that basically helped to defeat the Nazis. Then you started NATO, despite the fact that Stalin had given you zero reason to do so.
And then y'all kill NATO. With, or excuse me, y'all kill Stalin. But that's a different conversation for a different day. They're like, bro, just be lying. Well, we ain't gonna lie that. We're gonna tell the history. We're gonna tell the whole truth here. The, the, look, like he course, did in Grozny, look, like he did in Georgia, like he did in Crimea, like he's now done in Ukraine. Why do you keep trusting this it, guy? Is it important to stick to the facts? The facts are these. Russia was promised. Got the Including Baltic Finland. states. And if you had had so on, what, Ukraine... Do, do you know the answer? No. Right, have a guess. 10, 15? 10%. Yeah. 10%, a yeah. tiny percentage what, what of Russia's that border. But what what that it means mean? is... A they, missile takes two... NATO is not... A, a missile takes less than two minutes. NATO is a defensive organization. <laughs> Tell that is, to the birds. Tell well, that to the people of Libya. Why Tell do you that think, why do you the think people so of many, Yugoslavia. Why do you think so many of the... Notice how he ignored that Libya and Yugoslavia point? Notice how he ignored that, y'all? Former countries in the Soviet Union are racing to want to be part of it because they are fearful not of NATO attacking them, uh -huh. but of Russia attacking no, them. No, they, they, look, like he course, did in Grozny, look, like he did in Georgia, like he did in Crimea. It's like he, he didn't attack Crimea. And this is what I'm. This, this, this is what I be talking about. Remember what I said at the beginning of this interview. Remember when he made that point about Ukraine voting for uh, independence. <clears throat> I'm gonna show y'all something real quick, just because some some of y'all might not might not know this. I, I need y'all to see this. Um, y'all remember whenever they were like trying to pretend back in the day, I believe it was 2014, that Russia was invading Crimea, trying to 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 forced them back into Russia, that Crimea wanted nothing to do with Russia, and that NATO had to get in, they wanted NATO to get involved. Yeah, nah, that's not what happened. Well, here's what actually happened. This is from BBC March, March 16, 2014. Crimea referendum, voters pack Russian Union. Some 95.5% of voters in Crimea have supported joining Russia, officials say. After half of the votes had been counted in a disputed referendum. How the hell do you dispute 95.5%? Crimea's leaders say he will apply to Russia on Monday. Russia Vladimir Putin has said he will respect the Crimean people's wishes. Many Crimeans loyal to Kiev boycotted the referendum, and the EU and the US condemned it as. Illegal. Yeah. Huh? That's so crazy because I distinctively remember Pierce saying not even two seconds ago, uh, nah, we gotta respect Ukraine's independence because they voted for the independence from Russia. Crimea voted to join Russia again, to rejoin, because they were they were part of Russia before. And all of a sudden, he's like, nah. Crimea wanting to be part of Russia is just Russian imperialism, even though they literally voted for it. 95.5%, and that was when half the votes were counted. If I'm not mistaken, it ended up being 97%. But, but Russia invaded Crimea. No, what they were doing was protecting Crimea from Ukraine, trying to bomb them into oblivion for having the audacity to exercise their right to vote and choose which country they would have liked to be a part of. But hey, we're going to let him cook. I guess, I guess Pierre. He's now done in Ukraine. Why do you keep trusting is this it, guy? Is it important to stick to the facts? The facts are these. Russia was promised. Gorbachev was promised by the United States by James Baker, mm. the Secretary of State, to George Bush one. Speak on. If the Red Army left Eastern Germany, NATO would not expand one inch to the east of Germany. Speak on. They have expanded thousands of kilometers to the east of Germany. Speak and on. They it. now have nuclear missiles. Speak within on. Within two minutes of hitting St. Petersburg. You're not answering my question. Why have these why have these former countries, part of the old Russian empire. No, 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 no. <laughs> you just going to ignore that, Pierce? <laughs> I, NATO literally said they're going to do one thing. He's like, you're like, I don't understand why Russia's reacting this way. 
Because that was that was the whole premise is that Russia's reaction is an overreaction and it is disproportionate and illegal, quote unquote, which is not. He gave you the he, he gives you the answer with historic context, historic context that he's, that Pierce has yet to even try to deny. And you're like, well, give me give, tell me why these, 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 these former Soviet Union countries are rushing to join NATO. Well, hold on. So is, the, is it so is it what? So you're defending NATO because they're defensive or because you hate the Soviet Union or because you don't like Putin or because the war, the invasion was illegal or because Crimea ne never deserved the right to vote to join Russia. Therefore, they deserve to be attacked by her or because like what this man can't. Boy, I got ADHD. I don't know if Pierce got ADHD or ADHD dumbass because he can't follow through on a single thought that he starts without trying to move to the next thought because he's realizing shit man I, i'm getting my ass handed to me let me go ahead and switch this subject up you what is this important why have they been so keen to join an alliance which is a defensive alliance it's not because they want to be aggressive <sighs> once again he keeps saying defensive alliance but and he's demanding that George answers his questions, but he hasn't. He's like, okay, so what about Libya? Okay, so so what about uh, Yugoslavia? Okay, so what about the violations of the Minsk Agreement? Okay, so what about the expansion that was never supposed to happen? How do you keep saying it's defensive? Why haven't you answered George's questions yet? Aggressive you know, to Russia, it a, it's because they want to be defended they, when Russia almost if, inevitably attacks them. If they're defensive, why did they bombard? Uh, Belgrade for 90 days. Listen if they're me. defensive, why are there ships sailing in the South China Sea as far away from the North Atlantic mm -hmm. as it's possible for a NATO warship to be? Why, why are the Russian airplanes? Hold on, no, no. bro. So you're, you, why don't you answer the question? Why don't you answer the question? Piers, can you answer one of George's questions? Just want to let us know that you're actually interviewing somebody and that there is somebody talking to you in the form of an interrogative statement. Can you pretend that you're interviewing somebody, that there's actually somebody across the table from you and answer the question? Just once. Jesus Christ. Flying over Europe. Actually, there are virtually no Russian airplanes. Virtually no, that's comforting. Virtually none. That's comforting. How many are there? But I'll tell you something. How many are there? Well, a lot fewer than there are American but you get planes bringed it... around why are you so... Russia and China. But George, because why, America are so... want... why are you so keen because America to take want... the Putin worldview? No, I'm, I'm keen what? that Russia should not be broken up into Balkan states. To... Who's, who's going to do that? That's the avowed no intention but no, of, no one's attacking of the RAND Ru report. No one's of attacking the Russia. Tanks. Well, you say they're not attacking Russia. He said, who would do that? Who would balkanize Russia? <laughs> Y'all, we are talk this is an interview about Ukraine, right? Y'all do know Ukraine was part of Russia. Okay. This is an interview <laughs> about Ukraine and how they've been helped by, by help, been helped and really forced to some degree in, in some ways by NATO to antagonize Russia that was formerly the Soviet Union. In an interview about NATO, Ukraine, and Russia that was, was the Soviet Union, he's like, who wants to balkanize Russia? Where did you get that idea from? <laughs> For those of you who are not understanding the joke, NATO wants to balkanize Russia. NATO balkanized Russia. That was the point of NATO. <laughs> It was NATO, that's what they want to do. That was the that was the goal. They wanted to balk not the Soviet Union, and they unfortunately were successful. What the? He really just I'm just go ahead, man. Whatever. You know what? Whatever. No, no. Crimea no, no. was yesterday uh, shelled oh, by an attackums missile programmed by the United States. Crimea belongs to oh, Ukraine. My. It doesn't belong it to does. Ukraine. You talk no, to it people stolen. voting. It was you, stolen you in 2014 by voting. Vladimir Putin. Well, do, do, does voting... This man really just said Crimea be belongs to Ukraine, y'all. And also, Crimea belongs... You... Okay, y'all... Holy shit. Piers just said... This is this interview was from, what, yesterday? It was less than 24 hours. 24, 25 hours ago? He just said Crimea belongs to Ukraine. Um, They just launched rockets at a Crimean beach. Ukraine using an American drone to guide the missiles in an American missile system just bombed Crimea, killing 
multiple people and injuring over 150. So you bombed your own country? And then one of the, the leaders of Ukraine literally said there's no such thing as civilians in Crimea. There are only civilian occupiers. In other words, they're free game. Like he's getting his talking points from, uh, from, from Netanyahu. This man has no self-awareness. Mean anything or not? Well, you the, think the, the vote after they stole it matters? You think you had the any, referendum? Any... The referendum that was held in oh, Crimea, God. as any fool would have known the result would be, was <laughs> at least ninety percent for rejoining Russia. Rejoining and being the operative word. The Crimea was an autonomous part of Ukraine during the Soviet uh, era. The people of Crimea, like the people of Eastern Ukraine now, it wouldn't have been. If there hadn't been a war, if there hadn't been an invasion, if there hadn't been a coup, most people were content to live in an independent Ukraine, whether they were Russian people or Ukrainian mm. people. And it's an important dichotomy that a third of them are Russian. They would have been happy to live under a democratic uh, government in Kiev, but that's not what we have. First of all, his term has run out. But secondly, the overthrow of the legitimate government in 2014 led to a war of attrition against the people in eastern Ukraine, which turned the people more and more to the point of view that, as Russian-speaking people, they're better off with Russia. We should have implemented uh, the accords that France and Germany uh, guaranteed and the Security Council subsequently adopted that would have guaranteed Ukrainian neutrality. There's nothing unusual about that. If, if Mexico or Canada uh, decided to join a Chinese-Russian military bloc, America would never accept it. Never. Neither will Russia accept it. Ukraine, Ukraine is now part of, Ukraine. Ukraine is part of Europe. It's not well, part of Russia. Russia. It's not owned it's by Russia, Russia anymore. What? Hold Russia. Hold Russia. Hold the truth what? is Vladimir Putin... What? What? Ukraine is part of a continent of Europe. Okay. okay. Putin just be saying shit. That... <laughs> Hey, like, I was to my hat. Hey, man. So, like, what time is it, bro? I don't know, man. But like, I don't understand why my girl cheated on me, bro. I treated her right. Like, I can't even, I can't put my finger on why she would do me that way. And even besides that, like, I thought I was doing well in school. How I got on academic probation is beyond me, to be real. Like this, he somebody asked him a question. Or makes a statement and he just be saying shit. Be like, yeah, man, you know, if Mexico that borders the United States, if if Russia tried to give like weaponize them and, and, and enroll them in Russia, like, you know, US wouldn't have it. Ukraine's part of Europe. Okay, thank you for the random fucking well known fact of the day that we already acknowledge. What? What are you talking about? That's the point. <laughs> Ukraine is part of Europe. Okay, cool. Russia's not. Russia doesn't want an enemy bordering their nation. You get the point? Mexico is Mexico. The United States is United States. Mexico does not belong to the United States. So if Russia tried to enroll them in some type of military partnership and started giving them weapons and overthrowing the government to make sure that they belong to Russia, the United States wouldn't have it. Because technically speaking, they're not part of the United States. They're bordering the United States. Do you understand the analogy, Pierce? You fucking dumbass. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> wants to take oh back God. a lot of the stuff oh, yeah. that he believes was wrongly broken up when the Soviet believe, Union was dismantled. I don't believe that that is true. I know oh, you don't, but Russia, I'm, Russia, I'm curious why you constantly Russia, take it. He's even said that. Russia, Russia is a European country. Moscow is the biggest city in Europe. Mm. It would have been far better to us, to, for us, to have accepted not just Russia, but Putin's own olive branches. Mm. He asked for Russia to join NATO. Why would you do, here's the thing, George. Why do you trust Vladimir Putin? Well, I, I trust him more than oh I trust Keir Starmer. Oh, really? Yeah. He, you trust, tr you trust yeah. Vladimir I, Putin I trust him more, more than Keir Starmer? I trust him more than I trust Joe Biden. I trust him more than I trust Donald oh, Trump. Hang on, hang on. Hold you, on, let me finish the statement. I can't really get past I, Starmer. No, you would well, trust easily, Vladimir easily. Putin I, more I, than Keir Starmer? I, I wouldn't trust any of them. 
if they told me what day it was today without checking. <laughs> it's true. I always say that. I was like, literally, if, if, if Biden or these motherfuckers are like, yeah, man, the sky's blue, I'm like, oh, shit. It's certainly purple or brown because there ain't no way in hell Biden's telling the truth. That's literally how I feel about him. I don't trust automatically any politician. I check the facts. We lived through an era and were sacked because of the result of it in which we were told certain things mm. by our own leaders that turned out to be blatant be lies. Right, and here's my point, George. This is my point, is that you seem to have bought in to Putin's whole justification. He keeps saying, but like, no. Is he? Are they talking? Because you would almost think that this motherfucking interview was delayed or virtual or there was some lag. Aren't they sitting in the same room? He's like, you seem to have bought in. He literally said, I don't trust any politician on his face. I just trust, trust the facts presented to me. But I don't get George's. How you just bought in to Putin? There's no way this guy is, oh my God. As Farage has, he oh was God. provoked. This he had crazy. no option. There is no doubt. To which I say, bull I say bullshit, right? This is a guy who proved in Grozny, who proved in, uh, in mm. Crimea, mm. who proved in Georgia, and has proved again in Ukraine. He will attack where he smells weakness. And no, I don't will... think that that is true. I'm... But if it were to be true, then you'd find me on the same side of the argument. But do you as not think you. the invasion was an illegal invasion? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, invading so how, so anyone, why, anyone's. How can you justify uh, well, it? Well, for the same reason, I justified Vietnam's invasion of Cambodia uh, to. I actually don't believe that the invasion was illegal. I, it, that, I mean, wow, that's, that's kind of surprising. I'm surprised me and George disagree on something. That's very rare. I don't agree with it because it, it isn't an invasion when the one you violated the agreement that you had to stay away from NATO and to not bomb, you know, Russians. But when the it is a defensive measure. You get what I'm saying? Like it isn't illegal whenever you're bombing Russians, you're bombing Crimea, you're bombing the Donbass region, and then you're threatening to join the organization that is dedicated to the, the, dem the demise of my country. That is a defensive measure at that point. I think that all of us would agree. What am I going to do? Just let NATO m set up shop and blow me to pieces? Yeah, okay, no. <laughs> I would not want to do that. So I, I, so I disagree with that frame. I don't believe that it's an illegal invasion. To stop the tyranny of Pol Pot. And but you're likening uh, Zelensky to Paul Pot. Paul Pot. Uh, I am actually. Oh, I'm you really, can't be serious. I, I am. I am. For the thousands of children, women who were killed by uh, Ukraine's regime before Zelensky and after Zelensky, I think that the tyranny, the killing fields of the Donbass, uh, were as gruesome. The in killing fields of the Donbass have been perpetrated by Vladimir Putin. No, no, no. The killing what? fields of the Donbass were from 2014 Fuck to Putin's God. invasion. Who do you think it's to stop since he invaded? You know, I, I, I'm old enough to remember Tanzania invading Uganda to bring about the overthrow of uh, big uh, Idi Amin. Uh, it is not <laughs> always George, the case me. that an intervention Nothing. by a neighbour is a negative uh, thing. And in the case of... It's not an intervention. You've just called it yourself an it illegal an invasion. invasion. You said illegal. It was an illegal invasion. How I mean, technically speaking, you can consider it to be an illegal invasion on the basis of an intervention. Like, it's not... Those two things aren't mutually exclusive. Can you justify... <laughs> it I don't know why it's arguing so much. But. And the justification for it from <laughs> the Russian-speaking Ukrainian point of view was to save them from massacre. It's bullshit. Well, they were being massacred. They were being massacred. massacred. What the fuck? You just didn't notice it. <laughs> no. You just didn't... You. The massacring you, has been perpetrated by Putin you know on that. Ukrainian people. The, massacring and massacred are two different things, first of all. Also, there's a war going on right now, so there's that. The massacred, in other words, in the past, no pasado, it happened in the past. The, it's... We call that cause and effect in the fourth grade. That's what, at least, was what I learned. <laughs> it's called cause and effect. He's like, Putin's massacring right now. And then he like just ignores the fact that he's like, no, nah, like, no, nah, he definitely was massacring. No, nah, 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 that didn't happen. That's happening now with Putin. He's just gonna, he just ignores the fact that people got, have been getting slaughtered by the Ukrainians, by the, by, specifically Western Ukrainians. 
It's it's, it's so. Oh Jesus! And by the way, on his own people, there's oh. plenty of killing in Ukraine now. You, let me pick you up on one thing you said, which yeah. I want to clarify. This is mm. what you said about the Butcher massacre. I've yeah. been to Butcher, so mm. I want to play this clip. So I don't believe that Buka was a war crime. I believe it belongs in the long line of false flag operations used to trigger war. False flag? Absolutely. It was a massacre carried out. Have you by... been there? No. It was a... Have you spoken a... to How the people? How could I go there? I'd be killed if I but went I have there. been there. I'd be killed I've by... I've been to the yeah, because of you're massacre. his friend. It's because you're not, chilling his, for him. I'm not his friend. Zelensky would have me killed if I went there. I am absolutely That's certain not hyperbole about that it. the people who were massacred at Buka were massacred by the Nazis that are the foundation stone of the existing uh, uh, Ukrainian George, state. Is, the, oh, Azov, George. the Azov Nazis George. were the people who carried George, out the Buka George, massacre. This is complete insanity. How is it? I don't even it's believe you think that. I absolutely think it. I why, saw, why are you saying uh, something like that? Because I believe it. But I've been I there. Only I've literally well, interviewed the well, families of the people who well, were massacred. You weren't They there. were massacred by you the weren't. Russian. Like they saw the 40 beheaded babies. You mean like those? Was it something like that? Piers, that video that everybody's seen, that nobody's actually seen? <laughs> Like when we, we they interview those those they interview hostages for real and they were like oh those, those interviews them, them, those those are fake we're gonna we're gonna try again and then they really interview the hostages after the lip injections and the payoffs and the threats the threats from the government like those type of interviews appears okay all right and forces. you went there when it happened when I've it, spoken to the people who saw the Russian well, forces well I've also raping heard, and murdering their families well now we're back to. You always drag out this rape thing. Yeah, because you know I what seen, happens a lot. I haven't seen any reports of rape at Buka. Really? So if Why you, don't you go and check it out? Have, well, I will. But the Presumably, you think it would be the Ukraine. By the way, that isn't actually like a popular narrative. I don't know why he's even focused on it. That's just weird. I don't know. Ukrainian Nazis who did it. Uh, well, they've certainly raped people before. Right. Are so you they're denying, capable, but the Russian are you, forces are. Are you denying that there are Nazis in Ukraine? It is, I read a whole report about this. It, there is a tiny, tiny number of people associated themselves with the Nazi oh, ideology. Oh, the statue, the bandera. It's a tiny, tiny number of people that make up an entire battalion. But hey, it's, it's only a tiny number of people. It's only a tiny number of Nazis, guys. It's okay. That's different. I mean, it just so happens to be like, you know, that percentage of Nazis actually has enough military power and influence to persuade the government to kill ethnic Russians. But other than that, it's only a tiny percentage of Nazis. Is, what's the big deal? Wait, there are Nazis here. There are Nazis in Germany. Yeah, but we don't have Nazis streets in we, America. We don't call streets after them. No, but you're, we you're, don't build monuments to them. But George, we don't call it, universities after them. You cannot, there's there's, you there's a cult serious. of Nazism. There's also a cult of supporting people like Putin when they perpetrate atrocities like no. Buja, right? And you seem there's, to think that somehow in your head he didn't do that. Uh, you said that there are a tiny number of Nazis tiny. in Ukraine. Then why is the main street in Kiev called after Bandera? Mm. Why is Bandera and his Nazi collaborating gang proliferating statues, street names, institutions being called after them? Why do they carry Nazi flags and insignia? There is, I can SS, tell you, I can tell uh, you, tattoos. there is a tiny percentage well, of I, Nazis. Oh my in God, Ukraine. hold on. Tiny. Are you, are, oh, wow, you've been, hold on. Pierce actually answered a question? Wow. He actually finally answered a question. You know, now he's got like 45 more to respond to, but he finally, when it was time to defend the Nazism in Ukraine, that's when he decided to answer the question. I ain't gonna lie, Pierce. That ain't a good look, bro. That's not a good look. I was like, you could have answered a lot of questions. Maybe you should have let that one slide. All them other questions you chose to ignore, <laughs> and you're like, let me defend the Nazi statues in Ukraine. <laughs> no, you can say that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, because I've spoken well, to people I, who know. I, 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 and I have oh. spoken to people who know. Right. 
But you and think I this massacre that I, I witnessed the scene of this massacre report. with my own eyes. Yeah. I talked to the people who'd lost their loved ones, who had appalling things done to them. Mm. It was done by Russian I don't believe invading that. forces. I, I believe that Buka, uh, in all the circumstances, is a false flag of the kind with which we are really familiar. That you commit an atrocity and you blame it in order to manufacture consent for what comes next, you blame it on the bogeyman. So you now, think the Ukraine was behind the Russian forces advancing through to that area, no. and then they stopped because they blew up the bridge? These people were murdered. You think they did all this? These people were murdered because they were Russian collaborators. They were murdered by Russia. They were, no, they were... Well, we, Vladimir you know, Putin... You, the, the, he, they were murdered, so the Russian collaborators were murdered by Russians. Okay. Uh, okay. You All right, in, we can, hundreds and hundreds we, of people. We can, in Buka. Yes. How many hundreds were killed? I don't know the exact number. That's funny because you've been there and you've read a report. I think it was the, <laughs> the, the 400. <laughs> I, I've seen. <laughs> Gorgeous George. <laughs> with uh, the haymakers uh, of uh, the slaughtered people who were all <laughs> wearing been in your report, the 458. They were where, you've got somebody speaking in your ear. I have, ear. because I said uh, I thought it was yeah, about 400. Yeah. It the, turns out it was yeah, 458. The, the, the people that I saw on television were wearing armbands, which identified them as Russian collaborators, people who had taken the soup from the then occupying Russian forces. We're not going to get anywhere uh, batting this one around. My stance is this. The Russian-speaking people in Ukraine decided they wanted out of Ukraine. They have a right to self-determination. The coup and the massacres that ensued after it in 2014, the abolition of their language, the criminalization of their culture, and the uh, parties led them parties. to conclude that they no longer wanted to be part of that kind of Ukraine. It would be far better if we now negotiate, and what as you, Macron said, all right, what as would you do? What would you Farage, do? let's participate. We're going to stop there. Definitely go check out the rest of that. Y'all go, like I said, man, George, who, by the way, shout out to George. He's always showing love, man, on Twitter. Invite me on the show. I really appreciate it. Back in the day when I was just a young chap coming up, uh, George was, was always showing me love. Always, um, you know, promoting promoting my show and uh, you know promoting my show to his to his UK audience and, and stuff like that. Hey, all the love in the world for George.